Hello and welcome to The Man Games. This is our podcast show. It's The Man and The Wife. Podcast is our first on-screen podcast, so let us know if you prefer it this way in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and like this video if you do enjoy it. And make sure you have your notifications turned on so you know first when our podcasts go onto the channel. So last night was Royal Rumble 2021. We stayed up for it. That's why we look rough. We? You look, I mean, more me than you, darling. That's better. Um... So the first match was Goldberg and Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship. Um, I was surprised this was mm, the first match. I literally not saying that. I was surprised this was the first match. I thought it, it would definitely be further. Like I thought the the women might have opened. That's what I was thinking. But I thought it might have been Charlotte Flair and Asuka. Like, I didn't realise that was going to be pre-show. the, the yeah. pre-show. You didn't even hear that on commentary, did you? Yeah. Like I, I don't really listen to the commentary anymore because it just all sounds the same. Yeah. No, but um, yeah, so surprised this match opened the show. Uh, which then kind of told us who the winner was. Which, which, we why, also, why did it do that? I just, I just kind of knew that they weren't gonna. I just had, I just had this feel like once, once I saw this was the first show. This was the first. <laughs> oh, this is the opening of the show. I was like, oh okay, Drew's definitely winning. Huh? You don't feel that way? No. Oh, okay, I did. Um, it was nice to see Goldberg in a bit of a different attire because not is wearing like the same thing, pretty much for like ages. twenty years. So like it did. It was a bit good to see him like change his look a little bit. Mm. And Batman's no. sorry. No, I was just saying when Drew came out, I thought like for someone who's been off for a few weeks with COVID, he looked insane. Like yeah. he's definitely been using his time away just to. What did you think to his new entrance? Like with the kilt and the sword and. I quite like it. I don't really. I like the kilt. I'm, I'm not a massive fan of the sword. It, it's like um, is it King Arthur? Is that right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think it is. It's like that. I'm sure it is. Um, oh, I liked okay. it. I thought it was good. Yeah. I thought it was you know to his heritage. Yeah. When it cups the cups. When it cuts to the announcers, also I thought Baron Saxon looked very sharp in his red suit. Didn't notice him, yeah, at all. I didn't listen to him, but I noticed him. (laughs) But I listened to him and didn't notice him. So match starts off before even the bell rings. Drew headbutts Goldberg and spears him. Mm. Um, It's a stiff-looking spear, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Mm. that really did surprise me. um, Him knocking out a spear. And then they go to the outside and Goldberg spares him through the steel barricade. Yeah, but it doesn't now. look like a steel barricade, though, does it? No, like no. It's, it's all padded, so that's a bit of a lie, really. Um, so, yeah, then they get back into the ring. Um, and sort of as the bell rings, they um, Drew gets a claymore straight away. I think he gets two in a row, doesn't he? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and then Goldberg does get some offense, but I didn't really get notes down. That you got more notes on this match than I did. Okay. I'm just like. Oh, I, it's just like you seem to be like, taking it. All I was, style. yeah. I, I just sort of thought I didn't get, I didn't get a lot of notes. I don't really like Goldberg matches, yeah. which is probably a really unpopular opinion. I just find them a bit. Ugh. So, um, <laughs> I feel like you hate me when I say that. No, no, no. Okay. So yeah, Drew gets two claymores straight away. Went for another one, but Goldberg ducks, and um, then it's spear from Goldberg. Um, Jack Allen Hammer, but only two. Goldberg goes for another spear, misses. Claymore from Drew McIntyre, and he returns the championship. Yes, yeah, so he wasn't on top of So nice, nice and quick. I miss a lot. Good, nice, quick match, though. Yeah, it was a nice, quick match, yeah. Sorry, I just cut you off there. Oh, it's okay, again. <laughs> uh, but in, what did surprise, what well, I don't know, surprise me, was. Um, so at the end of the match, um, Goldberg like shakes his hand and they hug in the ring and they do a little like, um, you know, you've 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 done well, you know. You've... Well, the story. Sorry, there's a bug on the wall. Um, <laughs> right. The story was. I don't know if you saw this. At the end of um, Raw, was it like old school or legends or some 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 crap where they get all the legends back in. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying the legends are crap. I just think it's a very used idea on Raw. That's more right. what I mean. Okay. Um, at the end. Goldberg comes out and says to Drew, you've been disrespecting all the legends, blah, 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 blah. That's what built this match. Right, okay. Which he hadn't been doing at all. No, that doesn't... Like, I not really. I don't watch a lot of Raw and SmackDown. Um, because it's awful. Well, Raw is well, awful. Yeah, but like even hearing that then, I was like, that didn't really happen, did it? Um, but I think at the end of this match, I don't know if Goldberg's selling or if he's actually being, he just looks destroyed. Like, he looks like that match took it out of him. Do you think that was selling, or do you think? Oh, that man, was... I'm hoping it was selling. I thought maybe the Miz might have cashed in in this match as well. That did surprise me. I thought maybe the Miz was going to cash in and then get pinned, so then like neither the big names get pinned in the match. Yeah, but I think it was quite nice that 
um, Goldberg took the fall for. Oh yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Like it doesn't, it doesn't happen very often, you know, where the the big name goes over for the the, the new fellas. The new fellas. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know that Drew isn't really new, but he's still like younger than Goldberg, so. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, next match we have is Sasha Banks versus Carmella for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Uh, before we start, just how amazing is Carmella? Like. I think she looked absolutely awesome. Yeah. The one thing I did think was in her entrance, I like, you know, where they do the light and the sheet and then they drop the sheet. But the way the light was sort of situated this time um, just made her body look a little bit distorted. But that obviously that's not her fault. That's just a, um, I guess, like a technical thing or something. But yeah, just made I, I thought it just made her body look a little bit more distorted. Um, but still love the entrance. I still, still think she looks great. I like this character. I think it's, oh, yeah, yeah, I do. I think it's good. So, um, before I go into this match, actually, the, as I said, the first match was only 2 minutes and 30 seconds. I actually did think it was longer than that. Yeah, I thought it was longer than that. Yeah, I was going to say maybe 4 or 5 minutes, yeah. but the, 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 the crammed so much the, into that 2 and a half minutes. I want that belt. Oh, yeah, well, maybe, yeah, to be fair, yeah. It's that happened the belt. the belt, yeah. yeah. So, that, if you add that on, it's probably closer to 2 minutes, isn't it? So yeah, before this match starts, um, Sasha Banks is doing like a promo backstage. And yeah, because Carmella's already in the ring at this point. Yeah, and she says, I'm going to drink the champagne of Carmella's tears. Who talks like that? Who talks like that in real life? Like, what writing crap like, came up with that? I didn't even hear that yeah, line, to be honest. I, just, I, was just, I remember thinking just like... The shush. <laughs> yeah. People don't speak like that. If you're going to go and if you're in a pub and you're going to take someone outside, you're not going to say, oh, I'm going to drink your tears, lad. <laughs> Ladies, might you just don't know. Well, maybe. I wouldn't I'll have know. to see one to ask one. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, so, <laughs> going into the actual match. I haven't got a lot for the beginning of this, of this match. I did prefer their TLC match, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I thought... I wasn't impressed overall by this match. Um, my first sort of note was when Reggie gets involved when he gets up in the apron of the ring. Um, yeah, but, and before that, Sasha had hit maybe three amigos on Carmella. Mm. Um, then Carmella throws Sasha to the outside. That's when Reginald catches her. Um, Sasha hits like a head scissors and it, and then slaps Reginald. Mm. There's um, as well. There's a point where Carmella gets like Sasha's hair and, like ties it up in the ropes. Don't even notice that. Yeah, I didn't notice that. Yeah, yeah. Reginald gets into the back as well. Um, mm. Camilla hit an awesome dive through the through the ropes onto Sasha. Mm, it, was a lot, looked... it was like the 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 later dive onto yeah. Trish from back in the day. That was good. Hopefully, so Camilla didn't injure herself like yeah. Lena did. Um, Sasha goes to the top rope. Uh, well, Sasha goes. Sorry for yeah, it's the top rope for a flog flog splash. A flog, uh, a flog, a flog, a frog splash. Um, but Camilla gets her knees up, um, and then Sasha goes to the top ropes again. Um, and Camilla gets with a super kick to the sternum, and then gets it again to the face. That was um. I thought she was going to win on that, to oh. be honest. Um, but then the match sort of really... Yeah, Sasha gets a bank statement in and she returns the title. Mm. At some point in there as well, Reggie gets sent to the back. I, I did say that. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. I didn't listen to that. Oh. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was surprised when this match ended quite soonish. Like, I don't know. I, I did think their TLC match was better, so yeah. I was expecting it to get better, but I didn't think it really did. Not that it was a bad match, it just wasn't amazing. So then we go backstage and we see the new day. They have a Brody Lee tribute attire mm. on. That was really nice, wasn't it? And um, so I've got my Brody Lee t-shirt on. I had it on last night for the Royal Rumble as well. I have my Finn Balor on, hoping he'd come in. But yeah. so you can actually he buy this t-shirt on Pro Wrestling Tees, and the proceeds do go to Brody Lee's family. So if you like the t-shirt, go out there and do it and support the family. It's the best way mm. to help them out. It's a lovely shirt as well, isn't it? It's is a lovely shirt. Yeah. So now going into the Royal Rumble match. The women's Royal Rumble the match, women's. that is. I was surprised that the women's came before the men's. I don't know why, I just was. I think... I think because the winner of the men's Royal Rumble was meant to be a bigger deal than the winner of the women's. But why? Well, I don't really want to spoil it in case no one's seen it. Oh, I suppose, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So, <laughs> Jerry the King Lawler is on commentary in this... Um, Oh yeah, match. didn't like his t-shirt. Did you see what he was wearing? No, it was a black t-shirt, just like loads of just like random crown, crowns on he it. He's the king. I know, but like it just wasn't. It looked like something you buy from Topshop. Uh, that's what it reminded me of. Okay. Yeah. Um. So Bailey comes out number one. She shaved curl into the back of her head, and Michael Cole wasn't even on commentary. So 
What a waste. Why, why did she do that? Oh, because she's always slagging her off on commentary and she always um, shouts at him, like on SmackDown when she's having a match and he says something. And oh. she's like, I'm not disrespectful, Michael. And things like that. Oh, okay. I don't. Yeah. And Naomi made a return at number two. Mm. She looked good, doesn't she? Yeah. I thought, yeah. I thought that she looked very impressive at the beginning of this match. Um, at first I was like, oh, no, I was back then. I was like, not really missed her there. Like, <laughs> I hadn't really noticed. Yeah. Which is sad, isn't it? Because she's actually a good athlete. Yeah. Number three was Bianca Belair coming to the ring. And they tried to, um, Naomi tried to do like a double cartwheel. cartwheel. It double didn't cartwheel. really work the first time, but they tried it again and it did work. So, you know, yeah. they yes. wants to try again, that kind of stuff. Number four was my girl, Billy Kay. Oh, she is so funny when she comes out with like a resume. headshots. And uh, yeah, resume. And she sits on the commentary. And says, I'll, just, I'll just wait, shall I? I'll, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll just wait. <laughs> it's really funny. I like your Australian. You're trying to do an Australian accent there. I can't do an Australian accent in, for the life of me. Uh, then after that, um, Shotty Hat Blackheart comes down in a little tank. And, and she finds a pellet at Billy Kay. I was getting to that. I was getting. I know, that. but it just angered me. Okay, but Billy goes over with a little, you know, headshot and it's like, oh, you know, we'll team up, and then she finds that pellet ladder, uh, which then Billy just goes back to commentary, and then we have Tony Storm come in, and you were adamant then that um, Billy and Tony were gonna. Um, sorry, sweet, oh, you've missed. I missed Shayna Baszler, didn't I? Yeah, my bad. Sorry. In fact, I did yourself. I was. I just got excited. Like, Tony Storm. you interrupted me, and then you get it wrong. You so Shayna Baszler came in number six. I thought her ring gear was absolutely awful, to be honest. Everyone had this. It was like a gold ring gear that was um, really popular this year, mm, and yeah. wasn't a fan. There was a nah. lot of it, wasn't there? Yeah, um, Shayna takes down Billy on on the way to her ring. Then number seven is Tony Storm, like her wife did say. Shotzi gets down. eliminated by Shayna Baszler. Um, this really bit, surprised me. Because... Yeah, I thought she would have more longevity in the match. Should we say? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, a bit disappointing. I thought she, she, you know, she could have done more in the match. Uh, like even her NXT matches, she 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 wrestles like like it's gonna be her last match. Some yeah. of the spots she does, you should be saving stuff for bigger shows. But so I'm surprised that she didn't really get to show off in this match. Really, yeah. Uh, then we had um, Gillian Hall, who I don't know who that is. So you've never seen Gillian Hall? No. So now you see her with this um, singer gimmick. Back in the day when she was first introduced, um, I can't remember someone had like a legal team or something like that. It might have been Melina maybe, but I can't actually remember. And Gillian Hall is that person and she has like this growth on the side of her face. Like it's massive. Like right. that was like her character. And the first, like I remember she used to wrestle on Velocity, which was like, um, like heat or, so it was like what, what, a bit, I can't even speak. So before SmackDown was taped back in there, there'd be an hour of velocity before. So it's more, a bit more like what NXT is. to be like the younger, you know, the, the greener people fighting. Like, like AEW. I remember seeing. Uh, yeah, yeah, I suppose, yeah. And I remember seeing her wrestle in that, and she had a, um, a mask on to protect the growth, even though it obviously it wasn't a real growth. Right. Um, but do you know how she lo- loses the growth? No. The boogeyman bites it off her face and eats it. Yeah, and then she um, starts doing a singer gimmick later on, and she has an album and everything. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, she comes in at surprise entrance, and uh, it's Jilly and Billy into the ring, which yes, they missed gonna... something here massively, didn't they? Like, yeah, it should have it should have been the iconic um, reunion the and come in and you know potentially eliminate people, which is you know the, the whole point. But um, but no, so Jilly and Billy come in, uh, which is really funny. It was nice to see like a different surprise, you know, some like. Spoiler alert, Tori Wilson comes in later. I mean, it's nice to see Tori Wilson, but she, you know, she's done this before, so it wasn't like a massive, massive surprise. Massive surprise, yeah. Uh, so after Gillian Hall, it's Ruby Riot. She comes in number nine. She looks really skinny, I thought. Like, really skinny. Mm, yeah. Like, I didn't realise how skinny she was until this match, really. Um, just a bit random information. Mm-hmm. Um, another... She hits a nice sub kick onto Tony Storm um, while they're fighting in the ring. All right. Yeah, and number 10, it was another surprise. It was Victoria. Um, she was working very stiff in this match, I thought. Yeah, bless her. She um <laughs> bit of ring rust, I think, the ball ass. As you know. Mm-hmm. Number while. 11 comes in and it's Peyton Royce. Which I guess, so I don't know, I'm assuming everybody else does this, uh, but we um 
we like as a countdown comes up, we guess who's going to be the next person. Um, and if we don't do that, why? Um, anyway, I guess it's going to be Peyton Royce. Um, but and I was right. So. Yeah, well then. Just saying that. Um, and she tries to do an iconic spot with uh, Billy, but Billy doesn't want to do in front of Ruby. Just she like goes to do it, and then she's like, yeah. she sees Ruby. She's like, oh, I can't I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Peyton Royce um, hits a widow's peak on. I'm sure it was on someone else, which is obviously Victoria's finish move, and then Victoria hits one on Royce to show how it's done. That was like a, a nice spot. Mm -hmm. Santana Garrett comes in at number twelve. When the name came off the screen, I absolutely forgot who she even was. <laughs> what did you say? What did uh, you the say? first person that I thought was Santana in AEW. <laughs> like he's a man. He's a man. <laughs> I was thinking, what's going on here? Uh, then we have Liv Morgan in at number 13. Yeah, my next note was I'm amazed Jillian Hall's lasted this long and then Billy Kay eliminates her. Yeah, she does. And then the right squad eliminates Billy Kay, which is heartbreaking. It is. I love Billy Kay. Uh, number 14 was Rhea Ripley. Um, yeah, and she eliminates Tony Storm straight away. I would mm. love to see Tony Storm in the match a little longer, to be honest. Mm, yeah, me too. Uh, and then Shayna uh, eliminates Victoria, and then uh, Rhea Ripley eliminates Santana. So yeah. Quite a few eliminations in that little bit there. And then number 15 came in, and it was Charlotte Flair. Bailey then eliminates Ruby Riot. Number 16 is Dana Brooke. Um, and Peyton Royce gets eliminated by Liv Morgan. Number 17 is... Surprise entrance, Tori Wilson. Mm -hmm, as you just gave away before. Uh, Rhea Ripley in eliminates Dana Brooke in a very, very stiff move. Yeah, she power bombs her on the apron to mm -hmm. eliminate her. Poor uh, Dana Brooke, she's had some beatings recently. That she, that bump she took from Nia Jax on Raw last week. It, that was awful. Yeah. Um, it was like, I don't know, like like a proper choke like, slam, wasn't it? Like, mm -hmm. it? It just looked awful. It did. Then we had uh, number 18 was uh, Lacey Evans. Yeah. But she, first of all, the Ric Flair music woo, woo plays. And then she comes down in like a, the purple robe. Now, is it the purple robe that Charlotte was wearing or was it just a purple robe? I that... think, it, well, they say it was like it was the one she was wearing, but I don't think it was the one she actually was wearing. Right, okay. Um, and then... I don't really think they told like a really good story of. Like, there wasn't enough Lacey and Charlotte interactions for me. Because they're meant to be having a rivalry. And then, also later on, I don't think there's enough Charlotte and Rhea Ripley interactions okay. as well. Because, obviously, Charlotte took the title from Rhea Ripley, so you'd think... Rhea would be a bit... Yeah, it's just I mean, things like that that just, um, just don't really make a lot of sense. It's like, um, when when this, I'm sure the commentary team said, Oh, Charlotte Flair not happy about losing her tag team championship earlier. Well, she didn't look unhappy. She just looked the same as she always did. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's true. Um, so Charlotte eliminates Peyton Royce. This looked like a bit of a mistake to me. Yeah, you're saying that. Um, it looked like she, she she was, or maybe it was just a good sell of getting eliminated, but um, I, I honestly thought this could have been a it mistake. It looked like Peyton was supposed to hold on to the apron, her feet was supposed to be on the apron, and they didn't, they fell off the apron and... Yeah. Mm. Uh, and then Shayna Baszler eliminates Tori Wilson, and Bianca Belair eliminates Bailey. Yeah, the the... the Miss this spot first, don't they? Have to show a replay. They do, yeah, because you were you said to me who who eliminated Bailey. Is Bailey eliminated? Yeah, I saw Bailey get eliminated. I just didn't see who had eliminated it. Mm. Uh, then we had number nineteen was Mickey James. You she she had some new wing gear on, which yeah, I she liked. Looked totally different. Mm. Yeah, she got rid of the flares and she was in like uh, red and black. I, I really liked it. She looked number, badass. Yeah, number twenty was Nikki Cross. I'm not really sure what her character is anymore because she went from being like her. a psycho. To Alexis's best friend, and now she, is she a psycho again? Because she's screaming and running around, but she seems to be a baby fit. I, I, I don't know. Mm, no. So number twenty-one, Alicia Fox comes in. I have to say a name like that now, thanks to Noam Dar. Right. And then our truth run, runs in, which makes no sense because in the men's row rumble at number twenty-one, he doesn't try to come out because he runs out and he says, "Oh man, wrong rumble." So you'd think he's meant to be number uh, twenty one in the I men's Royal Rumble. Right, yeah. Okay. But then he's not number twenty one in the Royal Rumble. Oh. Dominic Mysterio was number twenty one in the men's Royal Rumble. I see. Um so um he comes down with the twenty four seven title obviously and everyone's chasing him. Yeah. Then Alicia Fox wins twenty four seven title. Yeah, I have seen a few people not very happy about that. But I I didn't mind. I thought you know, how many people can you say have won a championship match in the Rumble match. Well, that's, that's true. Yeah. That's true. And it's just a shame it's Alicia Fox and not someone, you know, better, really. Yeah. But that title means nothing anyway. It's, uh, no. It's, it's just, it's like our truth, like, play toys in yeah. it almost. 22 is Two, Mandy Rose. Yeah, she eliminates Alicia Fox and then Truth Rolls are up to win back the championship. 
-hmm. So was there any point really? Like, if they're going to keep this championship, do something different with it. You know, I really liked it when Drake Maverick had it and, you know, when uh, Maria Canellis had it and she was pregnant. Like, I thought that was really good. Like, how, how is she going to lose the title because no one can touch her? Yeah. Um, but then she only had it for a week and then her husband beat her and then he lost it straight away, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. Yeah. 23 was Dakota Kai. What do you think is Dakota Kai's new look? You didn't notice the <laughs> So she's got like tinky <laughs> hair now. Pinky hair, like pink coloured hair. Hmm. Yeah, didn't notice. Oh. She well, really well. had like coloured hair, does she not? No, she had brown hair before. Oh. Cool story. Okay. Lacey Evans delivers a woman's right to Mickey James eliminate. And then number 24, Carmella, comes back out, which um surprises me. I do, like she's coming down with her little with Reggie and um she's got like a mirror and a towel in the water and she's like <sighs> she's just all hydrated and everything. Yeah. She did, I think she's taking that character and really roll with it, like, you know. Oh, yeah. It's full yeah. time. Mm. Rhea Ripley dumped Dakota Kai on the apron, eliminating her. So Kai wasn't in this match very wrong. Mm. But wrong. Long. Oh. Ripley also eliminates Mandy Rose as well. Carmella eliminates Nikki Cross. Number 25 is Tamina making his way. Her. His. Her. Where's the ring? <laughs> oh, dear. Um, yeah, so Carmella eliminates eliminated because Reggie dropped her. So this was a bit weird, wasn't it? Yeah, because... Yeah, I get... he's, so, he's holding her. He's holding her, and then he sees Tamina, and he puts her down, and then she super kicks her. Well, surely she, she was meant to super kick him while holding Carmella. Mm, yeah. Which makes more, more sense, Or, really. like, as he's going to super kick it, like, more drop to protect himself rather than yeah. drop. Oh, it's coming. Yeah, yeah, it just didn't seem quite well. Um, then Naomi uh, gets... I don't, I'm not, I can't remember how or what, what happened. So she... Belair eliminated her. She tries to, and she lands on her back, just with her feet yeah. in the air, so she can stay in the ring. She she uses Bianca Belair's hair to pull herself back into the ring. Yeah, which was a, it was like a cool thing, like a good idea. I just don't really like the idea of when they're actually out of the ring and but they're like in. I don't know. It's not like they've, they've stood on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they don't say. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I, I I don't know. I wasn't really a fan of that. Number 26, Lana makes her return to the ring. My next note was, nah, I bet Nia Jax is next, but she wasn't, she actually. Wasn't. It was Alexa Bliss, which, really surprisingly, she gets eliminated virtually straight away by yeah, I just, uh, Rhea why, Ripley. Why even have her in the room? But, like, I just don't, I just don't, if you're going to do this, what was the point? And, like, because they, they, the screen started to go, didn't they, as if, like, The Fiend was coming. But when that does it, she turns from nice Alexa Bliss into, That's like, what I mean, it's like The Fiend, the fiend Alexa Bliss. But it doesn't fully go, does it? It just goes the halfway, but then she because, gets eliminated. Yeah, so. but that's because she gets eliminated by Rhea Ripley. I know, it just doesn't, I just, I don't like it. Oh, yeah, I just, I, yeah, it's pointless. I'm just explaining it, and you're yeah. just like... Getting angry. Oh, yeah, you are, yeah. so stop. 28 is Ember Moon. She hits Isn't that 27? Oh, we said no, 28, yeah, sorry. So we'll try again. Number 28 is Ember Moon. She hits an eclipse onto Shayna Baszler. 29 is Nia Jax. So Shayna, so at that, that point, Shayna's on the outside, but she's not been eliminated. And she gets back into the ring with Nia. Shayna eliminates Lacey Evans. Then Nia Jax eliminates Ember Moon. Nia Jax and Sherman working... Sherman. <laughs> and who, sorry? <laughs> Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler eliminate Naomi. Then they look to eliminate Tamina. And then Nia's like, no, she's, she's family. family. And then she that. does eliminate her anyway. With, Which makes um, no point. No sense, really. Yeah. And then Nia eliminates Shayna Baszler, her tag team partner. Mm -hmm. Newly tag team champions that won the titles back in the kickoff show. It, this wasn't very cohesive, was it? Because then... Um, so not, and then... Uh, Alana eliminates Nia Jax. Yeah. Uh, so you think that Shane would be annoyed at Nia, but then they work together. Do you know what I mean? Well, it's all for one on one for all. Number three is Natalia. Now, what was the point in having. So, on backstage, I had a match between Tamina and Natalia. Right. And the winner got the number 30 spot. Right. Could you think of two less interesting people to have that match yep. and to have this spot? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, who? No, no, no I, uh, I mean, like, no, you can't. Yeah. yeah, I used to be a fan of Natalia, but now I'm just a bit over her, really. She's just, she, her character is exactly the same. Mm. It's always been, um, like, she tried some new ring gear here. It, it was awful. She looked like Pikachu, to be honest. <laughs> um, it's just awful. Yeah, so when she got beaten up by um, Shayna and 
um, Naya as she was coming down to the ring. And we were both hoping, like, oh, maybe she's not going to get into the ring and then somebody else runs yeah, down. Yeah, hopefully, like, Becky or Ronda or Watch anybody. anybody else. <laughs> but they throw her into the ring, so it doesn't happen. I, I don't know. I just feel like these last sort of, like, Amber Moon, Naya Jax, Italia, Lexa Bliss, Lana. Like, I just... These last sort of four or five people just wasn't very interesting. I don't know. Like... I think it was more it was maybe more to salad, build, build yeah. to the last people in the ring, so it was just down to them, maybe. Yeah, well, and then they did do that, because then we were very excited by like the last few people. Yeah, Natalia and Lana Hook, they were kind of like a tag team for a little bit, but then she eliminates Lana. Uh, Belair eliminates Natalia, and then the final three are Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, and Charlotte Flair. Which my I felt sick, I was like, oh my god, yeah, it's, like, gonna it's gonna be Charlotte. It's gonna be Charlotte, it's gonna be Charlotte. It wasn't. But then Belair and Rhea Ripley team up and eliminate. I've never Flair. been so happy watching Flair get eliminated. And then knowing that, like, to be fair, I picked both these people. Um, but you can win. only have one pick. But it doesn't matter. Um, um, but the person I picked won. Um, and it was a really good back and forth. We, we yeah, it was saying. a bit like the, the um, which is hard. It's strange to say Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley a bit like Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. But in, <laughs> in I think it was 2007 Royal Rumble, then two of the last two, and they actually wrestled for a little bit before. Yeah. That's what this was like. And like, um, you genuinely didn't know who was going to win, did you? Oh, yeah. yeah I was... mean, I was going to be happy. It, 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 I think I wanted Belair to win more. Because I feel like she needed it more than... Yeah. Mm. Um, one thing that did catch me out, when Flair gets eliminated from the Rumble there, she just, like, laughs. And she's probably laughing because, well, I'll, I'll be champion by Rumble anyway. Like, I've just lost the belt. I'm going to get in a warm night next week because that's yeah, my character. That's true. So, uh, I'd like to point out that Bianca Belair wins and that was my prediction. So, I feel like uh, we should probably talk about our scores and the whole prediction -y. Well, should we not leave, leave that to the end? So, okay. then we'd have to spoil anything in case right. we haven't seen the Royal Rumble. That's true. But why would they be watching this if they've not seen the Royal Rumble? So, the, to know what happened. Ah, okay. Do you know what the point of a review is? I think you listened to it after you watched other watch it then you would disappear ah, with no, people. No, 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 no. Oh. I don't think so. Okay. Well, I know people listen to Raw reviews so they don't actually, yeah. actually listen to Raw. Okay. So this uh, women's Royal Rumble was 58 minutes and 50 seconds. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I really enjoyed this Rumble. Overall, yeah, I think that the ending was really good. Sort of the middle was good, the beginning was good in the middle. I just thought that, that, like, the last few entrants for me was a bit crap, but didn't spoil the whole thing, so it's fine. Even though there was no fans there, I'd say I enjoyed this one more than last year's Women's Royal Rumble. Yeah. But that's probably just because Charlotte Flair won it and I didn't want to win it. Yeah, that's true. Then we and, have... And oh, before we go into that, in the Women's Royal Rumble neither, I didn't even think, like, this isn't as good as an all, an all Royal Rumble because there's no um, fans. And I did feel that in the men's at some point. Maybe maybe because the men's Royal Rumble, the bigger name, so you expect more of a reaction. Maybe, yeah. Um, but in the men's row, I just remember thinking, like, oh, it needs fans, it needs fans. But in the women's, I didn't. But maybe because okay. I cared more in the women's who was actually going to win, I wasn't thinking about it. But... Maybe. I didn't didn't know something like this, to be honest. Okay. I'm kind of used to it now. You know, it's like... Yeah, well, so, so am I, but... Yeah. I think it, I think at first, I didn't think the Thunderdome was going to change a lot, but I think I think it really has. It has helped. Yeah. Um, You know, the TV show bit, more. Bit, bit more. Bit more atmosphere, isn't there? Yeah. So then they go to the um, kickoff panel and talking about you know the crap they normally do. Uh, normally I just skip through this, but Peter Rosenberg says to our truth, "Oh, your childhood hero John Cena's here, and look over there." Then um, Rosenberg love blows him, and Rosenberg wins the twenty four championship. Two great comments from commentary here. JBL, this could be the worst moment in wrestling history. Corey Graves, well at least David Arquette's off the ropes. <laughs> it's not really the same thing, though, it's is it? It's not, but I had a good chuckle at it. <laughs> If you haven't seen the Dave and I Cat documentary, though, make sure you check out it. It's really good. Mm. I really did enjoy we it. We do enjoy that, don't we? So now the next match is for the Universal Championship. It is a last man standing match between Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns. I'm not gonna lie. I normally like the um, Raw Rumbles being last. Um, because I feel like it's a Raw Rumble pay per view. But I really wanted this match to be last so we could go to bed. <laughs> and when it came up, I was like, no, I don't watch this match for the Raw Rumble. Um. But it wasn't a horrendous match. I just find... Oh, no, it was a really good match. It was a good match. I just think when, when you're, you're... Obviously, you're staying up in the night to watch it. Yeah, it's like... And this was very predictable, the, I, I did think. Yeah, and this was like 2.30 in the morning already, and we were just like... And I thought this is going to go on for half an hour, at least. So. And this match did go... 24 minutes and 54 seconds. Yeah, 
okay, not quite half an hour. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So going into some of the notes of the match, so the the brawl around like the Thunderdome, um, like where the screens are and stuff, and then Reigns throws Kevin Owens like, um, through like tables and equipment and all sorts. Like it was a proper big bump for like. So yeah, they were the like match. climbing. Up the actual screens, weren't they? Like yeah. up and over the screens, and he throws them off that. That that was good. I actually thought that could have been like the finish. I thought maybe like an Uso could have been hiding and pushed him mm, off or something. He did say to me last week, um, and then um, they like go around this other like around the back almost, isn't it? And yeah. then Roman runs Kevin Owens with a go goal cart out of nowhere, and the amount of times the, they the, the sound of the 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 go- the, the, the plexiglass yeah. was awesome. Um, and they, how many times they replay that? About six, oh, seven. Loads, yeah. <laughs> it was just constant. It was like some sort of kid, like, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, Kevin Owens gets a um, what do you call them? A forklift. I couldn't think what it's called. <laughs> I don't oh, know yeah. why. And he like puts it to the top, and he like climbs up to the top of it. Um, he does a swan tom bomb off the top there, putting um yeah that was to a that table. was really good, mm. really really good. That was good. It's hard for them to do things that we don't either like see a lot or yeah. And like I did, I did like there's a lot of spots in in this match that you don't often see a lot of. So you know I did really like that. And we I don't think we've had like a false count anywhere. No, sorry, a last man standing match like this for some time. I mean you could maybe say that the um on an edge one was all around the place, but. It was just a bit too long, that one. Um, yeah, that went very long. Yeah. So, um, then, Kevin Owens gets spared through the um, set of the... Like the entrance. The entrance set. What are they called? Screens. Yeah, the screens. Um, gets up at nine. Then, the, um, Roman gets some handcuffs out, I believe. Mm-hmm. But then, Kevin Owens manages to get them off him, and he handcuffs um, Reigns to like, the bottom of the light of the set. And when they got to, like, eight, I thought... I actually did think like, oh crap, like he's gonna win. Kevin Owens is actually gonna win this because like, how else is he gonna get up? Yeah, and yeah. then Reigns just like pulls referee into like a bit of the set or something and, and knocks, knocks him, him out. out. Yeah, so he doesn't get to take ten count. Yeah, um, which like realistically, when when the ref comes back round, does like he not think like, well, you were nearly out, so like, what's going on here? Or like. Is it like, oh, I don't know what's happened. Like, well, a new ref came down, didn't they? Oh, was it a new ref? Sorry. Yeah, a new Sorry, ref. I didn't pick that up. A new ref came down there. So Paul Heyman comes down with um, the keys and they fumble forever, um, getting that um, handcuff off. And then, just sort of like really out of nowhere, Reigns chokes out Kevin Owens. And that's it. Like, I thought the ending was a bit grim. Yeah, you can't. It's a bit. Because when they've done all these big things, yeah. it was just like a choke that. Kept him down, really. Yeah, I just think that was a bit... Just not my cup of tea. Mm. Not my cup of tea. So, yeah, that was the last man standing match. Roman Reigns still your Universal Champion and Head of the Table. So... <laughs> You've been waiting for that, haven't you? No. <laughs> Is that a note there that you've got written down, like, joke? Ha, ha, ha. Pause for laughter. The, um, the WrestleMania... <laughs> um, promo should we say was on and it's pretty much like the same as last year yeah they just moved some stuff around which was a bit a bit annoying but um yeah it is what it is right now it is time for the men's royal rumble so on backstage like they announced the number 30 spot for the women's they announced the number one and two spot for the royal rumble which the men's, then what happens which was randy orton coming at number one and edge coming at number two and then edge comes in at number one and Orton comes at number two which it doesn't why you have one job why announce it and then Freaking do it wrong, and because and it's like these spots make any difference at all because technically they're both stuff at exactly the same time, so really it makes no difference. Do you know I think they just wanted someone to win from the number one spot, so then they can say, "Oh, three people have won from the number one spot, and two of them people are Shawn Michaels and Edge." Yeah, well, anyway, I can't say the third one because it's Chris Benoit. Do you know what I mean? All right, okay. that's that's honestly the only reason why I think. Well, anyway, it's um. Yeah, it was really stupid and it was annoying. And I'm, it's, I, I didn't go on Twitter or anything, but did the other people kick off about it or is it just you? Um, just me, I think. Okay. I, I didn't see anyone else say anything about it, so who knows. But um, Edge gets out of the ring and he attacks Orton in the entrance way before um, you know, the match has even started. Then they do get into the ring. Sami Zayn comes out at number three. Ali comes out at number four. Jeff Hardy comes out at number five. Nothing's really happening. Um, at happening. All. Dolph Ziggler comes out at number six and Dolph eliminates Jeff Hardy. 
Yeah, for considering Jess, Jess, um, Jeff Hardy's like a former world champion. He didn't really like mm. do a lot and a bit pointless, really. Yeah. Wasn't it? Then number seven was Shinsuke Nakamura, which I guess correctly. Oh, and then it was a uh, Carlito. Yeah, he looks like in the number eight. Yeah. Yeah. Looked really um, good. Sorry, you've gone like way ahead of the notes and stuff. You missed out all the um, edge taking around the yacht and out on the outside and stuff. Oh, I forgot about that. No, it's okay. You were just like, I couldn't like control you. That was all. <laughs> Take it away. So Edge takes out Randy Orton on the outside. With he DTs him onto the announcers table, hits him with a steel chair on the leg, and that takes him to the back. And it's just like all the stuff that happened in the first match. No one had to get taken to the back, and oh, it's just. I really don't like it in Royal Rumble matches when someone gets taken to the back yeah. and then come out later. It's just, uh, it's just crap. But yeah, Kali, who comes in number eight, he looks awesome, I thought. Best shape I've ever seen him in. Mm, really good shape. Um, he hits a backstab on Shinsuke Nakamura as well. That was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Big E is number ten, but before him at number nine was Xavier Woods. I was going to say, because I guessed him right. Another guess that I got right. Um, the New Day eliminates Sami Zayn. Number 11 was John Morrison. Ali gets eliminated by Xavier Woods. They've been feuding on um, Raw recently. I was surprised there was no more retribution around ringside, to be honest. Mm, that's true. Um, but who cares about them, really, anyway? Yeah. Um, then Big E gets fuming. He grabs Ali by the throat and throws him over the top rope, eliminating him. Number 12 oh, is Ricochet. Ricochet. God, I, I used forgot to... he was even in the company, to be honest. And that's awful, because I can remember when, like... You know, he was in NXT and everything, and when he first got called up, was so like he was such a big deal. Like yeah. uh, to me, he felt like a big deal. I thought he was a you know really good athlete. I mean, still is obviously, but uh, what a waste! What a waste! What a waste! Then number thirteen is Elias. Yeah, Elias eliminates Carlito. Number fourteen is NXT's Damian Priest. Mm, happy to see him come up. That was good. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he, he's like a full time caller. Oh really? Mm. Okay. Uh, Damien Priest eliminates Elias. Number 15 is the Miz. Um, Priest eliminates Miz and Morrison pretty straight away. Pretty pretty much straight away. Mm-hmm. And then um, the Bad Bunny comes down because they had a backstage segment talking nonsense, really. Mm. They did do, he did do a, a musical or rap or I don't know Music- what he did because I um, skipped through it, actually. Um, mm. So, yeah, he does a, a splash. Yeah, From the top rope. And that was it, really. Yeah. He doesn't look as bad as Snoop Dogg's in AEW, but, I mean, was there any point in it? No. 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 Number 16 was Riddle. Number 17 was Brian Danielson. Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan. Sorry, uh, I said his real name. Uh, and then number 18 was Kane, which shocked me. I didn't yeah, it shocked me as well. He comes in, he chokeslams Edgy. It's a double choke slam onto Priest and Shinsuke Nakamura. He eliminates Dolph Ziggler and Ricochet. And then Daniel Bryan's like, hey, man, yes, it's my friend. And they hug it out. Yeah, and they hug it out, yeah. And then he chokes them to Daniel Bryan. Yeah. That's... And then Damien Priest and the minutes came pretty much after that. I know. I... So, yeah, a lot of stuff like going on in the... That little segment there, the Yeah, because like, entrance was meant to be in like 90 seconds or something. There's a lot happening in them 90 seconds. Wait, I saw something, on, I think it was on Facebook, that like people were actually timing it, and the timings were like minutes, like it was not. Equal. Yeah, I mean, like, how hard is it to get the time straight? You just have a bloody timer. Yeah, it's not great. But is it's it? so they can, you know, do their own. Which is really annoying though, because that it doesn't make it even for everybody, does it? No. Because mm. uh, even though when you play it on like two K twenty, because obviously the other man games, you know, eighty percent of the channel is like two K twenty content, really. Yeah. Even in them Royal Rumbles, like they, their entrance, their entrance um, times don't even seem like right. Oh, really? You can click them into shorter and they just seem the same. Just the same. Oh. Yeah. Um. So from there, number 19 was uh, King Corbin, which I also guessed. Uh, I'm just going to tell you what I guess on, by the way. Um, Corbin eliminate, eliminates sorry, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah, this was a bit pants so far. Considering Nakamura is a past, you know, Rumble winner, I thought he could have been at least in for a bit longer. Uh, number 20 was Otis. And he pretty much gets eliminated straight away by Corbin. Yeah. He seems to have fallen a long way as well. So bad, isn't it? So bad. Um, uh, 21, as you said earlier, was Dominic Mysterio. Not our truth. Not our truth. Dominic eliminates Corbin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, number 22 was um, Bobby Lashley. 
Or he actually just throws Dominic Mysterio over the top row. <laughs> yeah. That was quite good. Eliminates Priest as well. Yeah. Number 23. The Hurricane, which uh, you were surprised at. Yeah, considering he was, you know, he did something with AEW um, back in November. So I was surprised that, because a lot of, you hear things, you don't know if they're true or not, but like Vicky Guerrero goes into AEW and they say, oh, she's banned from WWE and, you, you know, you just don't know what to believe really. Yeah. So, so Lashley um, and Big E eliminate the Hurricane, don't they? Oh. Yeah. I was just going to say, so when the Hurricane was in it a few years ago, and he, he runs in and John Cena's in the ring and John Cena eliminates him straight away. They kind of tried to do the same spot here, uh, but he didn't get eliminated. And then back in 2002, the Hurricane goes to double choke slam Stone Cold and Triple H, but then they just eliminate him and that's how he gets eliminated here. So he kind of relived both his past Roman Ball moments in right. this match. Okay. Fair play. Uh, then 24 was Christian, which I just want to point out, right? So when we were doing our predictions, and I said to the, the husband, the man, off this camera. one, off camera, and he was like, oh, who do you think is going to be a surprise incident? And I said, Christian, and you were like, he's injured, he won't be coming back, change it. You said, can he be in the Royal Rumble? You said, can he Anyway, be? and you're like, no, 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 change it, change change it. So I was like, I didn't tell you to change you it. You did. You were like, <sighs> scoffing at me and making me feel like an idiot. And I was like, okay, I'll just pick Triple H because, you know, He's always about, and he's probably sort of jumping. He's always it. about. He's the CEO of the company. That's what I mean. You know, it's it's, it's an easy sort of thing. And then when Christian came back, honestly, I was so mad at you. It was unreal. <sighs> Couldn't tell. Because I I would have beat the predictions if I had um, I would have won the predictions if I if I hadn't listened to you. Why I never listened to you, and I don't know why I did yet uh, the other day. So number twenty four was um Christian. And um, everyone eliminates Lashley working together. Christian hits the unprettier on uh, Big E. Edge and Christian have a nice hug in the ring. That was a nice moment. Um, AJ Styles makes his way to the ring. He was the guy that I predicted. Like, I didn't really think he was actually going to win it, but like I was kind of like hopeful. hopeful that he would win it. I guess he was going to be number 25 as well. Was it? So you know. uh, to number 26 was Rey Mysterio. Yeah. Um, Edge also spares AJ as well in the ring. And like they did the spot last year, and it... Um, so when Edge spared AJ last year, he like oversold, like he over like flipped it and he he injured his shoulder. And when he did it here, I thought, so he tried to do it quite similar. I thought, oh, mate, what like, are you doing? Yeah, wait till an actual match or yeah. Um. Yeah. So then Omas eliminates Big E. So AJ's big man. <laughs> big man. He's a big man. Um, starts helping with the eliminations, doesn't he? Yeah. What do you think to raise mask with like the Mohawk? Do you like him or not? I'm not a fan. I don't mind it. Yeah. His eyes creep me out. Obviously, he's got yeah, contact like in. Oh, okay. Uh, number 27 is Seamus. Then Omos eliminates Rey Mysterio as well. He goes to do a 619 on AJ, but then he gets eliminated by Omos. Yep. 28 is Cesaro. Sh- Cesaro. Cesaro. I feel like we've made more mistakes being on it on screen than we would have done before. Like, misworded things. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, number 29 uh, was Seth Rollins, which then you said to me, because uh, I don't, obviously, we didn't mention it earlier, but Becky Lynch had put a photo on Instagram of um, the backstage curtain, and everyone was like, oh my God. And then she put on, oh my bad, I just thought it was a picture of a nice curtain. And you had said to me, well, obviously, that means that Seth's coming into the Royal Rumble yeah. because. Why that, well, be and then I was like, I really want Seth to win just so we can get a really cute video backstage. That they, like they did for um, Betty and Cavalier and um, Wonder Squad. Yeah, I was like, and just so we can see the baby, but obviously that was the only reason I wanted him to win. <laughs> so number thirty was Braun Strowman. The just, disappointment oh. was like so you had predicted for Keith Lee to win the Royal Rumble, and it you? wasn't even in the Royal Rumble. And you think, well, well we've only found out early this morning that me and your man's COVID, so we're assuming obviously that's why. Because obviously, I'm not sure if they're married. They're certainly together all the yeah. way last time that. I mean, obviously, I don't know him personally, but, you know, <laughs> last time I knew they were yeah. um, together. So, so just a speed recovery. Yeah. So, Strowman eliminates Cesaro, Sheamus, and AJ Styles. I could hear your heartbreak when AJ yeah. got um, eliminated. Um, I'm just, I'm, I've never really been a massive fan of Braun Strowman. Mm. Like, I mean, it does, it, he's, he's looking in shape, so, you know, that's... Yeah, I just... Uh, yeah. Like, I don't even think I could say, like... My favourite Braun Strowman. Like, I don't even think I have a, like, a favourite Braun Strowman match. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Ro- uh, Rollins then eliminates Daniel Bryan. Yeah, he hits a curb stomp on the um, on the apron, I think. It's I think so, yeah. So like eliminating that. him. Yeah. Uh, and then Ro- Rollins also eliminates uh, Riddle as well. Yeah, with, with like, the same kind of... Mm, same sort of move, isn't it? With the same like, curb stomp on the apron as well, yeah. I believe. Yeah. 
So then, um, so now this is where everything kind of like speeds up a little bit. Yeah. So who's left? Because you couldn't even like take notes now, no, could I didn't. you? <laughs> so Edge and Christian. There's Edge, Christian, Braun, Seth Rollins, and obviously Randy Orton's backstage. So Edge and Christian eliminate Braun. Seth then eliminates Christian. Edge eliminates Seth. Randy Orton runs back in. RKO's Edge. And everyone's like, well, we're saying like, oh. <laughs> we didn't set up to four o'clock in the morning to watch Orton win another. Again. <laughs> but he does it and Edge wins. So, <sighs> not fuming that Edge won. I'm not fuming. I just wish... I, but I, I just don't think he needed it. So. I don't really like it when people win Rumbles more than once. Especially when it's people... Who don't need it. Yeah. Like when... I get why Cena won it in 2013 to build up to The Rock. I kind of get that. Yeah. And I don't think there was anyone else, really, other than CM Punk, really, who was champion anywhere until, obviously, later that night um, that should have maybe won it. It's just... And I just feel like there's so many more of the younger blokes that could have done with, you know, that momentum. And it's just like, but we'll give it to Edge. Yeah. I, I just... I, I think mean, they just wanted, like, a really big baby first win, I think. Yeah, I just... I don't know. It just, it just puts a bit of a sour taste in my mouth. You know when like Belair wins, it's just like, oh my god, okay, something new's gonna come out of this. Do you know what I mean? Something new's not gonna come out of Edge winning because he's not, he's not got it in him, has he? He hasn't got it in him to have lots of matches or to you know do a long run or anything like that. Yeah, true. It, it'll just be a short thing up to WrestleMania, and then you won't see him again. He'll go back to his old home and <laughs> happy life. <laughs> yeah, the happy life. Asshole. <laughs> I just mean, yeah. no, I just mean like he's done his run and that that's great. And it obviously, I'm not saying like that. I just mean, but Bianca Belair has the opportunity now to make her career go further. He doesn't need that. Yeah, true. I do think it's going to be Edge and Reigns. I can see Edge showing up on SmackDown now and challenging Reigns. I don't really see why he'd go for Drew unless there's like a character change. Maybe. Like mm. either Edge turns heel or Drew turns heel or Drew loses the title elimination chamber or fast lane or something like that. But I don't really want to see Edge and Drew you face see Edge versus and... face. Yeah. No, I think WrestleMania needs to be like your top heels versus your top baby faces and then so if they want Edge to be your top baby face then he needs to be going for Roman Reigns in my opinion. Yeah. I think so. So yeah, this um Royal Rumble match went 58 minutes and 30 seconds, so it was 20 seconds shorter than the women's. Hmm. Um, so, high points, low points of Pepe. High points, B- Bianca Belair winning. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Low points, Braun coming in, Natalia coming in. Yeah. <laughs> that little bit. I think it's more, the low point was more Natalia coming in, getting taken down, and then no one replacing her. Yeah. That was more the, the hope. Low point we had me. the hope that she was going to get dragged out the back, and then someone like really exciting would have come down. But yeah. anyway. Um. Yeah. I. I. I mean. I always enjoy. I usually always enjoy a Royal Rumble match. Um. I have enjoyed these. Good pay per view. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it was definitely more good things than bad things. Yeah. Definitely. Um. I don't really think it's a lot. Like just Sasha and Camilla just wasn't anything special in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, that's true. That, that really could have like been a the, Raw. Their TLC match was both on SmackDown, so it couldn't have been. But... Okay, it could have been. A sm- <laughs> It could have been on SmackDown. She's a SmackDown Women's Champion. Yeah, this match could have happened on Well, Raw. you know, it, it could have happened on a... It didn't on have weekly to be... TV. Yeah, that's what I meant. Okay, sweetheart. So, going into our predictions. So, we did actually tie our first ever predictions we've done together. Which means I don't get my present. Um, so... Do I not get a present for tying? No. Are you one of the people that just wants a medal for participating or something? No. So, I got right. Um, Drew winning... Reigns winning and the Women's Tag Team Championships. We didn't do a prediction on the SmackDown Women's Championship just because it wasn't announced when we recorded mm. the predictions a few days earlier. But I would have said Sasha Banks anyway, I'm sure you would have done as well. Yeah, I think I would have done. And obviously then you got right, uh, Belair, Roman and Drew, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we were tagged 3-3, free free, so we both got a point. Okay. Yeah, so if you don't know, what we're going to do is we're going to tally up who gets the predictions right and then we're going to do a special... Around Christmas time. Of a challenge. Of a challenge or a punishment or... And then when I win, you're going to buy me a present. No, that was just like, if you got these predictions right and you didn't... No, no, but uh, overall as well, when I win, you're going to buy, buy me a okay. present. What, well, because it's Christmas and... No, no, like an extra present for Christmas. Uh, okay. A winner's present. And a medal as well, I'd like, thank you. Maybe a crown. A crown? Mm, a crown and a medal. Okay. Or a tiara. 
I think we're running out of time. How long have we been on? <laughs> oh, 15 minutes. So if you did enjoy this podcast today, the first time we've been on the screen, so if you did enjoy it, please let us know if you want more podcasts like this. Let us know and we'll try our best to keep on delivering them like this. So um, we're doing our first watch along as well. That isn't actually um, a video one. A video it's one is a... just um, audio. Is a watch along of Superstars that is going up on the 7th. But on the 14th, we're going to do another podcast like this, and it's going to be us reviewing St. Valentine's Massacre. It is the first time I've ever seen it. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be reviewing that. So there is a takeover on the 14th of um, February, and they haven't actually named it yet, so I was hoping they were going to call it St. Valentine's Massacre. That is why we're reviewing St. Valentine's Massacre on Valentine's Day as uh, well. Are we watching takeover on the 14th? No. Okay. We're watching it on the 15th. A day later. I meant okay, all right. Unless you want to stay up on your birthday. No, I don't. It was watch. just my birthday, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> so so far, the only uh, matches announced for that are uh, is Ayesha against Tony Storm against um, Mercedes Mendinez or whatever she's called. I can't think of a proper name for the NXT Women's Championship. Um, Kind of hoping Tony Storm's going to win. I love Io Shirai. It's just I think Tony Storm needs something to give her yeah. an extra push. So I can't, I can't be, her, be home behind Tony Storm to win that one. Um, so thank you once again for watching today. Subscribe to the channel, like this video. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. And make sure you have your notifications turned on so you know when our podcast goes on the show. And buy the Brody Lee t-shirt. It supports his family. Thank you for watching the man. And the wife. Podcast today.